So you've been searching for a reusable water storage solution for your outdoor adventures. Something inexpensive, high capacity, portable, and maybe even the ability to pressurize. Well, search no more because our water storage solution checks all those boxes. You've probably seen or currently use these Scepter water cans. They make for a great, durable water storage solution, and when paired with this customized cap by JAGMTE, all it takes is a quick shot of air from the air compressor or a few strokes from this bicycle tire pump to transform your simple water can into a pressurized water station. It's fantastic. Whether you're offshore fishing, off the grid camping, hunting, or tailgating at a sporting event or the beach, this reusable upgrade will bring a whole new level of convenience to your outdoor adventures, especially when it comes to cleaning your equipment and yourself. So if you want to learn more about this cap from JAGMTE, how we use this system, or how to even simply upgrade your own cap, stay tuned, because we're going to make it rain. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Gator Overland channel. I'm John, and in today's video, I'll explain why I ultimately chose the Scepter Can paired with this JAG MTE customized cap as our water storage solution. For the do-it-yourselfers out there, stick around until the end, and I'll show you how to similarly customize your own cap. Don't forget to check the description below for links to this pre-assembled JAG MTE customized cap, as well as links to materials for customizing your own cap and can. And for your viewing convenience, this video is timestamped, allowing you to go to any point in this video without having to scroll or watch all the way through. So why did we choose this Scepter water can setup? Well, simply put, it checked all the boxes we were looking for in a water storage solution. Inexpensive, high capacity, portable, and able to be pressurized. Now, some of you may have just heard me describe a pump-up deck sprayer, which works great for a lot of uses. But for some folks, even with a Mr. Cap removed, flow output might leave something to be desired. Some of y'all have probably seen the water port tank options or similar do-it-yourself PVC solar tubes, which is simply a piece of four inch PVC about five foot long, capped at both ends, and similar ports for a hose and Schrader valve for an air connection. Both make for a great pressurized and solar heated water source, but they require you to affix them to a rack of sorts, and that won't apply to everyone's vehicle or their budget. And that brings us to our Scepter water storage solution. I will point out, I am not affiliated with Scepter or JAGMTE, but I've been using both of their products for some time now and can vouch that they are durable and withstand a lot of abuse. Definitely worth the investment. Food grade safe, lightweight, impact resistant, corrosion proof, rust proof, fungal resistant, BPA free. I mean, it makes total sense why these little cans are the standard for both Canada and US militaries. Let's show you how it works. So here's a little disclaimer. Though it's not uncommon for sealed containers to develop a little bit of internal pressure from changes in elevation or exposure to heat, ideally the sun, please understand that these cans were not designed for forced pressure. So you will assume all responsibility of damage to the can, the cap, and worst case, yourself as a result of use. So please pressurize with caution. And when not in use, remember to depressurize by pushing the Schrader valve or releasing the cap. JAG MTE claims that all their tests were done between 10 and 15 PSI. Don't go over that. For those of y'all going the pre-assembled route, JAG MTE provides you this scepter cap minus the O-ring. Surprisingly, you do not need an O-ring to make a proper seal, even when pressurizing. It comes with this ball valve, Schrader valve, and PVC tubing connection on the bottom. In the kit, you will also get three sections of half-inch PVC already affixed with couplings. They're about five and a half inches each, making about 17 inches overall. This is probably for shipping purposes and just for compact disassembly. It's your choice whether or not you want to make them permanently affixed using a food-grade safe sealant or cement. You're assembled. Now all you do is put it in the can. You are able to actually tighten this tight enough to maintain pressure, but I do recommend going ahead and investing in one of these cap wrenches here. Not only is it good for the cap, but it also has wrench fittings for other fixtures that go on these caps. You'll also want to invest in a tire pressure gauge. That way you can maintain the pressure not to exceed 15 PSI. All right, what do you say we pressure this thing up and I'll show you a few examples of how we use it. Do keep in mind this is keyed. It only goes on one way. Once you get it fixed, Usually when the valve is pointing down, it's about where I stop. You don't really need to get it super tight. All right, from here, just make sure your valve is shut. There's S and O, shut and open, and just pressurize away. Do keep your face just out of the way of it. It only takes a second. You start to see it expand a little bit, about five PSI. Fifteen psi. Now we're safe. Just to get a little bit of air out of that line, you can go ahead and 
purge it like that. What we're going to do here is I have this gear tie. This gear tie is also going to come in handy when you take a shower. But for now, it's just going to hold our stuff and just be out of the way. We have our quick connection, simple brass fitting. It just screws on like a normal water hose fitting there. And this allows you to quickly disconnect like an air pressure fitting and connect just this simple and you're done. So from here, turn on the valve, you feel it run through the line. This, the great thing about this particular, I guess, hose nozzle is not only does it allow you to totally lock it, but you have ability to adjust the pressure there. So it works great if you're wanting to take a shower, you can adjust your pressure just that way as well and leave it locked. Another design option we have, I came up with because not all the time do you need the water hose and nozzle, but just use a piece of extra and some PVC. What this does, you can simply put this onto the end right there. Now you've got your Nalgene cans or even smaller jugs. This allows you to use your cans, water, canteens, things like that, and eliminate the use for recyclable plastics out there on the trail or anywhere. And then you just fill, just that simple. I mean. <laughs> you could even put ice in this thing if you wanted to. You just have chill water all the time. But then, whenever you're not using it, just pop it off, put it together, put it around the ring. That simple. One of our uses is keeping the wheels clean. Not necessarily for an aesthetic appeal, but when you get off road and you get into the mud, sometimes mud can get caked to the interior of the wheel and it can cause an imbalance. Whenever you get up on the highway, it'd be all shaky. We don't want that. So you just quickly clean any part of the wheel. This is one of our important uses, keeping the front end clean. Whether you've been on road, off road for a long period of time or take the occasional dip into a mud puddle, you take a chance of clogging your fins with debris, bugs, mud, all different kinds of things. It's just as simple as going through, spraying that out. Also, keeping the headlights clean, or any lights for that matter. That way you can see whether it's night or day and other people can see you. Kitchen cleanup at camp has never been more convenient. It's literally a blast now, just like at home. It saves a lot of water doing it this way. We used to use this scepter can right here, fill up an expandable tub, mix it with this Dr. Bronner's environmentally safe soap, which is good for not only your plates, but your parts too. And we would actually use a lot of water, a couple gallons every couple days adds up to a lot. Now with this 10 foot hose attached to that at a central location, I can pretty much walk all the way around the vehicle one way or the other and have access to pressurized water. It's fantastic. Another great use would be a sanitary wash station. Doesn't matter if you're at the campsite or the job site. Need it next to a Johnny on the spot. Soap, water, all done. All day, <laughs> or at least as long as there's water. Our next use has become our favorite, and I imagine it's one that y'all been waiting to see and I've definitely been waiting to do. It's May here in Texas and temperatures are well into the 90s. That's about 35 plus degrees Celsius. And it's time to take a shower. So we wanna make sure that our valve is off. We're gonna go ahead and depress the handle here. Remember, this is your throttle, and this will be your on and off. You're going to take your gear tie here, open it up, and come up over our rack, position it where we want it. You can tighten it down at any angle. Make sure you're over on the shower, and turn it on. And there you have your shower. Obviously, whenever you're taking a shower and you're off the grid, you want to wet just enough to get lathered up, turn it off, get all nice soap and foamy ready to go, and when you're ready to wash it all off, you just turn it on again. Now, do keep in mind, this doesn't have to be for off the grid camping. This is, you know, if you're out there surfing or doing any kind of the beach stuff, great tool to be able to wash off all the salt before you get in your vehicle, and you don't have to have a rack. You can definitely go to a low-lying branch, or if you want to find some privacy out in the woods and not do it up next to your vehicle, hang it on a low-lying branch, stand underneath it, turn it on, and it'll literally do this until most of that water's out. I mean, this is just on that 10 to 15 PSI. And I have figured out for all the cold days, mathematically, I usually use about four gallons in this jug. I don't put five because you need a little bit of an air chamber in there. But if it takes four gallons, you use one quarter of that take out basically one gallon or around that and put it into a boiling pot of water. Once it's boiled, put it back in here, shake it up, and you'll have at least 80 degree temperature water every single time. Doesn't matter if it's 30 degrees or 70 degrees. The variable is about the same, but that's it in a nutshell. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, buddy. 
And one last thing, if you're expecting a period of time where this will not be in use or you're about to hit the road, make sure this thing is depressurized. Not only will it be safe, but it will maintain the integrity of the plastic. It's as simple as loosening the cap, using your tire pressure gauge and pushing the nipple on the back side right here, or taking a similar to this ARB chuck that actually locks onto the Schrader valve and just letting it sit for a second. That's it. Next up, I'll show you how to make one of these caps. All right, do-it-yourselfers, how about we customize a cap? Everything you see here is not only what it takes to customize the cap, but what it takes to create the SEPTA water storage solution you saw throughout the video. Don't forget to check the description for links to materials and instructions on how to build this. These are the materials required to customize the cap. We have half inch PVC here. Typically at a hardware store, they have these pre-cut 24 inch links. All you'll need is about 17 inches for this project. We have our half inch couplings. We have a half inch coupling by threaded adapter here. We have our universal tank Schrader valve and we have a replacement washing machine valve here. And here we have a food grade safe silicone sealant for securing the couplings. This is optional. These are the tools required to customize your cap. We have our drill, make sure the battery is charged. Scissors, clines, tape measure, marking utensil, a three quarter inch wood or proper drill bit. We have our cutting equipment here. You could use a hacksaw or PVC cutter and your choice of adjustable wrenches. These are the materials required to customize your scepter can. We have some off-brand scepter caps here. It's your option whether you want to go off-brand or the actual true scepter caps. They only slightly differ, but they have no problem sealing. You definitely want to invest in a scepter cap wrench. Here we have our handheld bicycle pump. It does work eventually. <laughs> I ended up investing in Flexzilla. I use it for all my air products as well, but it is abrasive resistant. Uh, 150 PSI capable, it's not prone to kinking, especially in cold temperatures, and it is food grade safe, which is fantastic. We have some zip ties here, we have some custom hose connections, that way you can make custom links. We have our adjustable nozzle with the throttle on it. We have our brass quick connect that allows you to quickly detach the hose from the can, and we have our gear tie. That's it. All right, we're just six simple steps away from customizing your own cap. Step one, we're gonna remove the cap and vent. This is the actual Scepter brand that came with my cap, and this is the off-brand. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the differences now. The ID hole of the off-brand cap is slightly bigger in diameter, and as you can see, it has a molded stopple on the bottom side, whereas the Scepter is just a quick pinch. Push that, pull it out just like that. This one, you'll have to take a pair of clines and just snip off just like that. Go ahead and unscrew. That one already's out and then pull off just like that. Step one complete. Step two, installing the universal tank Schrader valve onto the caps. There is no difference in diameter between the caps, so this process will be the same for both. Go ahead if you haven't already done it and disassemble your tank Schrader valve. Save that nut, discard the washer, discard that O-ring gasket there. You'll be left with just the one on the bottom. At this time, for peace of mind, you can put your food grade safe sealant on there and get ready for it to apply. Do keep in mind there is threads on both of these, so you might have to work it past them, and you'll just push it straight up into the hole there, exposing the threads. You'll take your nut, slide it down. There is a flat side to the nut and a round side. You want to put the flat side down. Get that tightened. Grab your adjustable wrench or wrench size specific. Get it to where it's snug, and then plus about a quarter of a turn, and then leave that up to sit to dry. Step three, installing the washing machine drain valve onto the caps. As mentioned before, there is some slight differences. The ID of this cap from Scepter is about 11 sixteenths and the off-brand one is about three quarter. So this is about 13 sixteenths in full diameter with the threads and everything. So you want it just slight. That way you can get a good threaded in there. I took a three quarter inch wood drill bit and got it started in there, kind of boring it out a little bit at a time. Once I got it to where it actually stuck in there, I put the drill bit on there and followed it all the way through. This one is already the proper size. From here, you'll take and remove the threaded fastener off of there and discard that to the side. And what you'll do here is get it kind of set up. As you can see, it kind of works its own threads into there. Just get it started pretty straight. Now we got a good thread going on. You can take your bigger wrench for leverage and put it on there and tighten it all the way down. Now, as you can see, it's coming through. Now that you have your drain valve almost fully seated, 
Feel free to put a little bead of food grade silicone right there around the ring before you fully tighten down. And go ahead and put some food grade silicone right there on this fastener and run that all the way up. Tighten it and another quarter of a turn, your cap is assembled. Step four is preparing your cap for the dip tube. Now that you have all your fixtures fastened on and the sealant's all done, what you want to do is take and wrap with Teflon tape or your food grade sealant right there on the actual threads and take your half by half coupling. Go ahead, thread that on there till it stops. Let it sit and dry. Step five, creating your dip tube. All you need for this is your half inch PVC and optionally, depending on what configuration you go with, half inch PVC coupling. As mentioned before, JAG MTE provides you with three five and a half inch cut lengths with two couplings. It's your option if you want to do that. Cut it in half with one coupling or do one full length and then just stick it in. Still optional whether or not you want to fully affix it using your sealant and that will complete the construction of your cap. Step six, customizing your can. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and take your scissors and cup off the edge right there, making it to where you have full access to the can. As you saw earlier, we have a quick disconnect, which basically you're gonna put the male end of the quick disconnect right here. You put the female end, which is the actual threaded male end, into this end of the hose here. Oops. And it just connects that easy. You can take your gear tie. You can really put it on here any way you please. Just out the back usually does fine for us. That simple. You can put it on the side, on the back, depending on if you have it up against something in the vehicle. This right here, all it is is an extra piece of PVC that I have stuck in there and just allows you to do this and put it on there like that. And this is the optional bicycle pump, which it actually has a curvature built in for being on a bicycle post. And it sits perfectly up against the handles. You can just affix it with the zip ties and it holds on great. Whenever you're done with it, or ready to use it, I should say, just unzip the Velcro, it ain't coming off and then you hook it on there and you can pump it up in the field if you don't have access to your air compressor. And that's how you customize the can. It's pretty simple. If you enjoyed today's video, found it informative or helpful in making your decision to go with a cap from JAG MTE or to customize your own cap, give us a big thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing. Share if you'd like, I'd appreciate that. For a heads up on any future installs or adventures, go ahead and hit that subscribe button notification bell. You can follow us along our journey. Remember, we at Gator Overland encourage each and every one of you to take a daily moment to unplug and reconnect with the outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. Have fun, keep it safe, and just go. Thanks, y'all.